And welcome back. We are joined by Congresswoman Young Kim, who represents California's 40th District. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you for having me back again. Absolutely. Yeah. So you're in town for the Thanksgiving break, which you guys got to have. <laughs> yes. You, you were past the yeah. stop gap, and you guys got to come out here. So how do you usually spend it? I'm yeah. thankful for family, and you have family members that are in the service as well. Yeah, that's right. As you know, uh, Thanksgiving is always a good time for my family, and obviously anyone who's watching, mm -hmm. time to give Thanksgiving for what we are grateful for the year. Uh, this year, however, I'm so grateful to be back home mm -hmm. um, after almost 10 weeks of what Congress was able or unable, unable to do. Yeah, so I'm thankful for that. coming home <laughs> and being home at Thanksgiving with my family was really a blessing for mm -hmm. me. But also I was able to do some meetings and attend events throughout mm -hmm. the district. But this year, I especially want to give thanks to those who are serving because um, many uh, servicemen and women spend uh, Thanksgiving away from their home, away mm -hmm. from their loved ones. So this year I spent some time in the community uh, welcoming them to our communities and spending um, Thanksgiving meal together, uh, you know, with the host families that, uh, you know, they, they were able to welcome them. Yeah. You do like coming, you work your district, uh, and, and it's, it's very clear every time you come in, you've got events you're doing and that kind of thing. How important is it for you to come in and meet your constituents and see them on a regular basis when you're back from Congress? It's really important because, first of all, I want constituents to know that I come home every weekend. And this time is obviously more important because, as I mentioned, the servicemen and women during Thanksgiving, when this is their first time for many away from home, uh, like in Villa Park, they mm -hmm. welcome 75 uh, Marines from uh, Camp Pendleton. Oh, okay. uh, each of them were taken to host families to spend Thanksgiving meal together. I also welcomed uh, servicemen and women from Fort Irwin. Uh, mm -hmm. They came to Yorba Linda and we spent time with them. So this was, even though I travel back and forth all crisscrossing the district when I come home, this Thanksgiving time I was able to you know, meet with so many uh, Marines, servicemen and women. Mm -hmm. So that's very, very important. And uh, you know what we do is uh, for my family Thanksgiving, uh, we have a tradition where after a meal, we all gather around a table and we write what we are thankful for for the year. That's and a so great that's tradition. We We've do. done that before too, and I really mm -hmm. enjoy that kind of like it kind of helps that, that that give you that remembrance of yes. what what's been going on with yeah. the year and that that kind of like kind of grounds the whole holiday. Yes, yes. So you're going back tonight, right? You're going back to, and what are you, what are you hoping to accomplish? <laughs> <laughs> so after spending a week at home, uh, we're gonna go back and try to finish the rest of the appropriations bills that mm -hmm. we weren't unable to do. But before Thanksgiving, we passed um, about seven stopgap measures right. that will fund the government through mid January and the rest by February 1. It was very important because we need to keep government open mm -hmm. to continue to do our work. When we are faced with $33 trillion of national debt, it is very important as policymakers to be reasonably reining in on our spending, but right. at the same time protecting those key programs and services such as Social Security, Medicare, uh, VA benefits. Mm -hmm. These are very, very important for me. So while protecting those, we're going to try to finish the rest of the spending bills. How can you do it without Democratic support? And I think that's the big question is mm -hmm. there seems to be a, a, a viewpoint on the Republican side at least is we don't work with Democrats. Well, we have a, you know, a controlled by the White House and we have controlled by the yes, Senate. Yeah. So how is that going to happen? How can, realistically, how can it happen? Realistically, obviously, we need to work together and really reach out to the other side. But that's the poison pill. Well, <laughs> that's what got uh, you know, uh, former Speaker Kevin McCarthy out of the office. But right. Speaker Johnson did the same. Okay. This time we got more Democrats okay. supporting the stopgap measure that we passed. Again, we are realizing and more members are realizing okay. this has to be bipartisan way, otherwise we don't get anything done. Right, okay. And right? I think it's that very, is, very is, important. Have we come to that point? I think it seems like it to me. I would agree with that assessment that, okay, enough Republicans mm -hmm. have come along and said, okay, 
we ha the good is the, you know, we have to get something done. It's right. the enemy of right. perfect, you know, and that whole expression. We can't like, okay. let the enemy of, well, what, is, what is the <laughs> word? Right? Great, great or perfect can't be the enemy of good exactly. is the expression. Yeah, so yeah. Is, is that where we're headed towards, at least in, in hopes that maybe, because I think that's what I think the most of Americans want to get something done. Because mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to be hard for you guys in the Republican Party on the side to campaign and say, what did we get done? So you want to be able to hang your hat on something at come election time and say, there we are, did do some things, right? There are people who say, don't give anything to the other yeah. side. But what does that mean? Not giving anything to the other side means just shutting the government down. Right, and you we get nothing too. We can't do that, right? right. And who's going to be blamed? The party and the majority that caused mm -hmm. the government to shut down. That is just not where we need to be. So mm -hmm. I think uh, my colleagues and I, we are really focused on getting the bipartisan support to get the, uh, the rest of the appropriations bills done and get it over to the Senate side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to come back. So what we pass in the House is not the end right. of everything. They're going to bring it back. And then that's when we go to reconciliation to make sure that we're doing the uh, responsive, uh, you know, while focusing on reining on the spending, we need to protect the key programs, as I mentioned, right. and that can only be done in a bipartisan way. Right. If I learned anything from my Schoolhouse Rock videos, that's <laughs> Congress. It starts in Congress, so it has to go to the president yeah. by the end. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> and so I want to ask you about your bipartisan measure on the health care side of yes. things. Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. So ever since I've been in Congress, and even before, um, providing the quality health care and making sure that the health care services and resources are accessible. So mm -hmm. health care accessibility was very, very important, but especially in district like ours, in, especially in California, There's we so have a lot languages, of people, right? right? We have people whose uh, English is not their number one uh, language. So language deficiency or language, lack of language proficiency shouldn't be the barrier mm -hmm. for them to getting the health care. So to that end, I am working on a couple of bills. One is improving language access on, it's called the Health Care Act. What we're trying to do is create a universal health um, language symbol. Uh, what we're asking is health and human services mm -hmm. to uh, do some research and uh, you know come up with a language a symbol that says if you are going to see a doctor, hospital, or any healthcare provider, there should be a symbol that tells you different language is available. Therefore, you not speaking English shouldn't be the barrier to understand what services are available. Another one is the Supporting Patient Education and Knowledge Act. We call it the SPEAK Act because we wanted to um, make sure that we address the barriers to telehealth care by creating a uh, translation services. Uh -huh. So again, when you go to clinics like what I just described, you need to be able to say, whatever the language that you need help with, so there is a translation services. Right. This is very, very important. And that's not, and that's not such a, a, it's not a crazy idea. It, it works around the world. We know it's simply with traffic signs. Yes. You know, if it's a triangle, that's a warning sign. Mm -hmm. If a stop sign is this different shape, and we have all these different kind of signs out there, so somebody immediately sees a symbol and say, oh, I know what this means, or I that's can go exactly to that, That's right? exactly the point of right. our two languages, yes. Right. Now, are you, have you guys been working with experts in terms of how we create those universal type of symbols and the, and the cross? for medical and those kinds of things? <laughs> That's what we're going to do. The HHS, uh, this legislation would allow Health and Human Services to mm -hmm. conduct research and develop that symbol, which shouldn't be too hard. Okay. Yeah. Oh, isn't that funny? We need a legislation I know. It's, it to is, make that happen. It seems crazy, right? Yeah. But that's that's why you're there, to get through the crazy <laughs> and make things happen. Do some common sense things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I like the common sense legislation. It always makes the best sense right. to everybody. It's like, why haven't we already done this? Exactly. You know? <laughs> um, what are you looking forward to for the new year in terms of your goals? Uh, obviously re-election, but <laughs> in terms of other goals that you have down the line. Uh, first of all, I want, I'm very, very thankful that the people of the 40th district has put their trust in me to continue to represent them. So for the rest of the year, obviously focus on making sure that our government stays open, mm -hmm. keep our uh, critical programs such as Social Security, Medicare, Veterans Benefits and all protected. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and obviously continue to deliver and bring results for my district. Okay. So that's what I'm hoping to do. Well, I think you are well on your way. Congresswoman yeah. Young Kim, 40th District, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. And when we come back, we'll be talking to the Publishing Club about genealogy and more. Stay with us.